brothers and sisters, my family that's here this morning with me, and and the people online that can't be here, and a lot of them, they thank me every time I make sure they get the teaching. They thank me because they either got to go to work, and I thank God for being able to record, for Gerald coming here a couple of years ago and teaching me how to do all this stuff. I had great fellowship yesterday. Keep Steve going. He's doing well. He had the, we'll know next week where the cancer is at this point. He had another chemo treatment, and I talked with him the last two days, and I believe all is well with his soul. It's the best, I, you know, he's been with me for eight years, and it's the best I've ever seen him. It encourages me to stay on that narrow road with God, that we can all benefit from being doers of the Word of God. So Psalm 70, uh, I'm recording this. It's only five verses, and let me start. You know, I was talking earlier a moment ago about Adam, and I read part of the last, I don't know, six verses of, I had them highlighted in Psalm 69. But today, David says, make haste, O God. And what was he asking God to make haste for? He said, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. That's like a, that's a daily prayer in my own life every day. I, I need your grace and mercy, Lord. I need to get through the day. I need to get through the troubles of the day. Give me wisdom. Let me not react too harshly to people. Let me become meek and humble like you are, Father. As I read the Word of God, you know, teach us to be more like you, not just me, all of us, Father. I heard that testimony from Linda last night, and it really moved my heart that she's using your way to reach her brother-in-law. And she confessed, confessed, not confessed, but confessed that she had anger toward him. And there's restoration now in that relationship. So, Lord, deliver us. You know, I'm speaking corporately for all of us that, that don't walk the way you want us to walk. And then we always use this second verse when we're battling the enemy. Let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my soul. That means the, the enemy that's trying to stop us from serving God, brothers and sisters, because it's a spiritual battle. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my heart. Well, it's not human beings, people. This is all spiritual. You know, we all have an enemy knocking at our door, and it doesn't stop. We don't lose that temptation, that, that battle that we're in, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, rulers, thrones, kingdoms, dominions. And my sister last night, one of the demons that got kicked out of her was the demon of the smartphone. Great example just now in the prayer group. You know, you can carry two conversations at one time. But you got to make sure you're muted. Let them be turned back for reward of their shame that say, aha. Aha! That means the enemy laughing all the way to hell. Every time they get us to do something that's contrary to God's word. That's the best way I can give that to anybody. You know? Let them be turned back for reward of their shame that say, aha, aha. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad. We sing a song like that, rejoice and be glad in him. 
in Christ Jesus. And let such as love thy salvation, that's God's salvation, that's the fullness of what God has done for us at Calvary. One and done. You're saved. Now you can be healed and delivered. Salvation is, is a walk of grace with God, and it's God's grace that we're even saved so that nobody can boast. Because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. I don't care who you are. And if anybody says they don't sin, they're, the Bible says they're liars. Now, whose report are you going to believe? God's real straight up in the Word of God. You don't need to go to college to understand that. You know, I, I watch all these ministries online, the pastor in deliverance. You know, he gets really mad at the people. He starts screaming and yelling at them. If you don't do this, I'm going to take a gun and blow you away. That's not a Christian. A true Christian will say the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you and take the bullet. Because the earth is not our home. You go back and study the early church. They got, they got burned to death. They got fed to lions. They didn't bear arms. It's really deep when you understand this. I was a veteran. I was in combat. And you want to know something? I wasn't saved either. I'd shoot somebody. My wife is more to shoot somebody than me. It's hard enough for me to put an animal down. And you have to do, do that as an act of mercy because the animal's suffering. But the word of God says here in four, thy salvation say continually and let God be magnified. This, this, these five verses say so much to all of us this morning. Why? Because we're wretched and poor. We're poor and needy. David said, I am poor and needy, and yet he was a king, and he was crying out to God. Why? Because God was his king. You know, when we speak things today, remember something. We have a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. He's God. He's the Lord God Almighty. Some of the songs I played this morning were a reflection to who God is. And that name is above all names. Five tells us, David's saying, but I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God. Why? Because thou art my help. And what else? My deliverer. It's so potent to what we all believe. Because without him, apart from him, we do nothing. With him, we can do all things. He delivers us out of darkness. He brings us into the marvelous light of his instruction book. To God be the glory. If we want to serve him, all we got to do is walk with him. All we got to do is open the Bible and say, show me, teach me. And say, yes, Lord. Because at Calvary, he bought us with his blood. He did something that was beyond that. It's, it's beyond my brain when I think about it. You know, I'm saved by grace. I'm saved because I had a, a filthy mouth, a crazy lifestyle. But there's many like me. And I, I turn around, he says, David says, thou art my help and my deliverer. I can go back to when I was on my knees, and I needed God to help me, and he did. And I made a vow, and I said, I'm going to, I'll serve you. You help me, and I'll do whatever you want me to do. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just didn't want to go to where I was going in life. Oh, Lord, make no tarrying. In other words, I need this grace right now, real time. 
And that's something you can do, like I do, is take a small chapter, read it and read it. Why? Because David was in a hurry. He wrote this brief psalm because God was not in a hurry. Three times he cried, make haste, and he ended with, do not delay. You know, I can tell you so many times in my little life that I've cried out to God, and many people around me have seen me where, uh, please let me pray. I tell people, I said that to a sister yesterday, uh, I don't agree with what you said, let me pray and fast. And then she realized, I'm serious about what I'm speaking. You don't have to give somebody an answer, one, two, three. But if you submit your plans before the Lord, and your, your life is walking with the king on a daily basis or a weekly basis, I've always taken the time to go to God in prayer and fasting. Even with getting this little puppy, I wanted, I wanted God to give me a green light because I got to make sure I'm here to take care of that puppy. And I don't know how long I'm going to live. I, I can't, I'm not prophetic that way. I see there, a, a word faith minister died last night, you know, and I, I look at all that, you know, faith, if you believe in Jesus Christ, God looks at a person's heart. None of us can look at a person's heart. We don't know what's going on. I know many people that love God and they got demons operating in them but they do love God. They profess Jesus Christ. You know, the Word of God says, if you confess me with your lips and believe in your heart, you're saved. I don't go beyond that. But I go to God in prayer about just about everything nowadays, including fasting, including should I take the time and either pray for people in the secret place or waste time trying to pray for people in deliverance? Because sometimes you can go months praying for people, even years. And there's no difference. So David was really beat up here. Because God's timing, brothers and sisters, is always perfect. Like Peter sinking into the water. Remember when he was walking on water with Christ? He believed in Christ. But something caused him to start sinking in the water. He did not have a time for long prayer. That's why prayer and fasting is very important in a disciple's life. You go back and you study the epistles, you listen to what Paul wrote, <laughs> Well, he had some wisdom. You look at John, the gospel of John, the love gospel. John had wisdom. When you go to the epistles, first two and three, of which I started last weekend on the pulpit, and I have to continue, and I'm not doing it this Sunday because I'm going to my daughter's church. I, I think about the men of God. I think about the word of God that even Peter, he didn't have time for a long prayer. All he could do was cry, Lord, save me. I think about that. I went off a motorcycle, totally destroyed the motorcycle on the Garden State Parkway. And all I could do is cry out to God when I was going over the handlebars. I didn't break a bone. Get it? I said, help me, God. That's all I said. He knows. Couldn't walk for a week. Got taken to a hospital and an ambulance. You know, I recollect that. That's in Matthew 14, 30. That's why I said, you know, I could talk about this a little today. I've lived these many, many different things I've lived apart from God. Even 
to the fact of fornication, even after I was a believer. You know, sin is sin. Lying is sin, stealing, robbing, all that stuff is all sin in God's eyes. That's why we needed a Savior. None of us are perfect. And everybody gets tempted. That's why Jesus illustrated. You can look at a person wrongfully and commit adultery or fornication in your heart. You know? Why does God delay answering our prayers? Surely, he can see how desperate we are and in what situation we're in. God does promise to give us grace to help us in a time of need. And that's in Hebrews 4.18. So when, when you sit here and you think about God, grace, many times God gives all of us grace because he knows we need help. That's the best way I could describe it, because I can, grace is just a gift from God. And when I explain it to people about salvation, well, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So it's pretty easy to, to be a representative of God if you got the zeal and compassion to realize that apart from God, that person's going to go to hell. And after battling demons for the, the amount of years I've been doing it, it's more important to make sure a person's saved. Demons we can deal with. God, God gave the instructions to the disciples. That's us. And there's some demons that don't come out unless you pray and fast, period. I've been in all, all gamuts of the, the game plan with the Lord, and I preach and teach it. And don't get upset. Just open your Bibles, read your Bibles, and ask God to help you, and you'll become the man or woman of God that he wants you to be. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit are distributed by the Holy Ghost. That's God in us. Most people don't even understand Trinity. They don't understand the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But if you're living the Word of God, you you understand it because God always shows up, even in a time of trouble, where he rescues us. He gets us out of harm's way in a supernatural way, just like Jesus disappeared when they were trying to capture him, and he just, like, disappeared. Well, think about that a little, you know? Your father's timing is never off or never wrong, brothers and sisters. Just like he knows what we're going to pray and talk about before I sat behind this desk today. I'm not reading a script right now. I'm preaching and talking from, from a little commentary and out of my heart. When God waits, we have a better gift for you than what you're asking him, because God's always perfect, you know? His delays are neither, uh, the commentary says, uh, denials nor defeats. But you're to put your times into God's hand, and we all know in, in the Psalms it tells us to wait upon the Lord. You know, I will wait upon the Lord. I mean, there's so many songs that people write that are actually uh, verses out of the Psalms. And Joseph, even Joseph, when Joseph was in prison, had to wait for God to free him and then to reconcile him to his brothers. Israel had to wait for deliverance from Egypt. Moses had to wait through 10 difficult plagues before Pharaoh would let the people go. Joshua and Caleb had to 40 years before claiming their inheritance. You know, and life goes on. I, I've been walking, it'll be 38 and a half years soon. And I got to tell you, I've had a lot of ups and downs as trying to walk as a 
a born again Christian. And the delay was not entirely my fault. You know, we have bumps in, I call it bumps in turbulence, like when you're flying across the country or across the oceans, sometimes you hit turbulence and it could take, I've seen people's eyes get really feared out when something was going wrong and turbulence in an aircraft. But when you travel a lot, you get used to that. David had to wait to receive his throne. Look at how many times he went and hid in the woods from Saul. Mary and Martha had to wait for Jesus to come to Bethany. And while they waited, their brother died. Think about what I'm saying. And God wasn't in a hurry. He was dead, and he rose him up. You know, I don't know about you, but I, I, I've been on the battlefield, and I also know that when a person dies or an animal dies, it begins to get not too good. But God is not in a hurry, even when we are. And his schedule is better than ours. And that's where faith comes in, brothers and sisters. I looked at this this morning in uh, McGee's book, because I always, I like Vernon McGee because he's a, he's a, a closer to my heart because I used to listen to him. And here's what he said in his commentary today. And this is what I'm going to close with. This is a lovely Psalm of David. It contends also to be found in the last five verses of Psalm 40. One of the critics once said, it's a fragmented accidentally inserted here. I will agree with the critic if you will take out the word accidentally. It is called the song of remembrance. Why repeat it? Because my memory is not very good. And good pastors know that. Because sometimes you could tell someone over and over again that something is not good, and they don't get it. You could read the Word of God over and over again and still not put it into practice. But when you get burned enough times, and you're really diligent in seeking God's will, you're going to reread scriptures, and then all of a sudden— that fog or that cloud comes off of us. Oh my, forgive me, Lord. I need to make a, a spiritual adjustment. That's all it is. Godly sorrow brings repentance. I can imagine that God, by the time McGee gets to the point in this book of Psalms, he will have forgotten almost Psalm 40. I'll repeat it. There are some things that we need to remember. And, and, and it illustrated in McGee, because this is the only thing he illustrated. That's what made me say I got to read this to all of us. Because it was the theme was an urgent cry for you and I for our deliverance. And that sister last night confessed to me. Tara confessed to me the other day about the smartphone. And, you know, and it caused me to stay off my smartphone a little because I want to be addicted to the Word of God. But the other flip is all I do on my smartphone, basically, guys, is listen to teaching. I go to bed listening to teaching. And sometimes I don't want to disturb Sharon, so it's in my ears, you know, on my bones. I don't use the ear things anymore. But... David wanted immediate help, and that's because the beginning, the first verse, make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Just like I said when I was going over the, the bars of my motorcycle, people, and that wasn't the first time I went down on a bike, but it was the last time because, man, I came close to being annihilated, and I had a family to raise. You know, and I, I used to yell at Steve and tell him the same thing. You got a daughter you're racing. Why are you out there at your age riding a motorcycle? And you know what? 
God corrected him gently. His motorcycles are gone. He's not. I, I've been praying for Steve for eight years, people. You know, that's the way I feel about all this. I learn from Scripture. David said, I'm poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help. Do you really believe God is your help? Then we need to start listening to God's word, people. That's what I get up out of everything I'm doing right now. If God's your best friend, he's your savior, he's your life support, then talk to God about everything in your life. I'm in a decision with my wife right now about a vehicle. Instead of having three, maybe I need to get down to two, you know, because I don't drive that much. You know, that makes sense at my age. And, and David said here, the last verse today, but I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me. In other words, show me, God. You're my help and my deliverer. Oh, Lord, make no tarrying. In other words, you don't have to keep going over the same thing over and over again. You know, when I fell on my knees and I needed salvation, God saved me. And boy, the, the enemy did not want me doing you think the enemy wants me doing this every day? Binding and loosening against Satan's kingdom? I challenge you to go back and listen to that three-minute clip that that guy from uh, Lake Hamilton put up of Wynn Worley teaching the women, and the women, 80-year-old women, were causing an upheaval because they were simply binding and loosening against Satan's kingdom. And the demons reacted, you know? So those were two old ladies. We're not old people, people. I'm not 80 years old. And I intend to keep doing what I'm doing. I got a prayer group. We're in the Word of God every day. I pray for people. I saw my brother Kelly come in. I prayed for his grandson immediately. He knows that. Because Kelly's known me for a lot of years, anyone that calls me. I don't care if you got ought with people, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's what's going on in our spiritual war. But you got to love them because they're part of God's creation and they're made in the likeness of God. Once you start getting into winning souls, you'll become somebody. And the enemy is really going to attack you. You know? So is it that we fall in a class? of poor and needy, and he wants uh, me to know that? Or is God my helper, my deliverer? Brothers and sisters, God is always for the poor and needy. Remember that. He tells us in Scripture, always remember the poor. So we're walking with God every day, and, and all the good blessings come from above. You know, one thing I could share in closing with my daughter, she was raised in the church from the time she was a little girl. She continued in church, and today she supports and gives to the church her and her husband and my grandchildren go to, and so does our other daughter, you know? There's still a couple of floundering ones in the group, and that's where brothers and sisters yeah. have to Remember, it's a spiritual battle, and we're all in it together. And when we come together in this battle, the testimonies, the victories continue to grow. Why? Because of our faith in Jesus Christ. And that's how I'm going to leave this off today. Little, little of my heart, little of my preachings tomorrow is Psalm 71, and I pray that this touches and reaches someone. You know, I was missing, the other day I was telling you guys, I was missing Nicholas Gilman. I found his card. It was in another Bible when I was reading Bibles this morning, and this is the guy that came here to quote me on some windows, and the most important thing got done for him. He got saved, and I got to start sending him the teachings 
So I'll make sure I send him a, a few of this week and last Sunday's teaching so that young man can get on with his journey and what came out of my mouth. And man, I'm looking at the different people that are here today. We haven't had a, the last time I had this many people in the prayer group was when uh, Jan and Debbie were here with us. And uh, it's kind of funny, you know, because all it is is a prayer group. And God bless you guys for coming in early and agreeing with the prayer this morning. And I hope somebody got something out of what the five verses said today, because I sure do. I, I just love speaking Jesus with people. And it doesn't stop in the prayer group. Make it a part of your life, and you'll start winning people to Christ. Amen? Amen.